favourable consideration and support. Yeah. Oh, very good. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta. Actually, a former member of that government who is now the current uh, uh, Mayor of Thames Coromandel District Council made her name on chopping down mangroves. So it's no surprise that this bill has been brought to the House. Uh, and it's no surprise in terms of the, uh, the content of the, the debate uh, of the local member, Scott Simpson, um, that much of the focus was on the efficient allocation of resources, I hear that. Labor will support this bill going to the first reading of a select committee because we know locally this is a contentious issue. Uh, no matter what people think about mangroves, uh, whether they should be there or not, how they enhance the ecological environment, the whole approach to a mangrove management strategy and what that means for parts of the coastline hold quite a deep significance for people who live along it. Uh, so I want to focus on a few things. Firstly, um, you know, uh, the Hauraki Gulf, Te Kapa Moana, as it's known uh, to, to local iwi there, um, covers about 800 kilometres uh, of coastline. Um, there are strong views amongst iwi in terms of the uh, contribution of mangoes to kai. Uh, that is uh, often uh, secured from around these areas, like pupu. My daughter loves to go and collect pupu, uh, and um, it's a sea snail uh, type of creature, and it's something that, uh, as a, a small whānau community, they go and gather kai to contribute to certain events. So when I heard uh, comments around the amenity value, one of the local concerns is that the amenity value uh, is primarily for recreational purposes, and if that is the case, the issues around uh, opening up more of the coastline for recreational use without the considered impacts on um, the coastal environment, uh, the bird life there, the kaimwana that is there, becomes a challenging issue. But that's exactly why we would want this bill to go to the select committee, because um, if you're not from the coast uh, uh, and um, don't appreciate some of those uh, strong connections that people have to their part of the rohe uh, and what they feel is important in terms of retaining uh, the type of uh, ecological value, then um, I think people will, s will, will not really understand how strongly felt some of the concerns are here. The other uh, point that was well made uh, was with regards to the existing uh, regional council process. It has been long and frustrating and very difficult if, uh, if at a planning level, people want to take a more uh, proactive and constructive approach to mangrove uh, management plans. So I, I acknowledge that. And again, uh, the, the Waikato Regional Council has done a number of studies on um, getting the right balance between the various types of amenity values, but also the contribution that mangroves make to parts of the coastline where at, they are suffering uh, greater erosion, erosion uh, that they are a buffer uh, to flooding, uh, that they can actually protect the coastline uh, in some valuable ways. Now, I'm sure that when uh, all the heads around the table with the best evidence are constructing these plans, they're trying to manage uh, the balance of these types of interests. One of the things that the current process affords that this bill does not is that the plans under the regional council process are certified by qualified experts uh, in this area, obviously supported and backed up by a lot of research. So this is an important component of the current process uh, that could be uh, considered within the context of this bill and whether or not it could be a helpful addition to the way in which district councils are intended to promote or uh, create plans in the bill. The other uh, aspect of that uh, that I want, wanted to comment on is um, local sentiment. It is true uh, that councillors, uh, certainly in the Thames uh, Coromandel District Council, if I recall, Councillor Fryer, Simon Fryer, um, was uh, championing a, an approach here um, and a local... Uh, survey that was taken amongst residents at the time had around about 68% uh, of the respondents agreed for 73 hectares of, uh, whangamata, uh, of mangroves in the Whangamata area to be removed. Um, so 
you know, we can't ignore the fact that both ways uh, there are very strong local opinions. I just want to make sure, really, uh, for the most part, that the select committee process will bring the strongly felt views of the community out in the, in the open, the way in which the community can participate in the proposed method that the bill is uh, uh, proposing uh, can, can be a public um, or process or what element assures uh, the public that they can contribute to the, to the decision making. Whether or not there are current aspects of the way in which management plans are, for example, certified by qualified experts could be integrated into this bill and also to get that ecological recreational amenity balance right. Uh, for all those reasons, it should go to the select committee. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder whether this is an administrative, uh, this, this uh, bill is being promoted purely for administrative ease rather than looking again at uh, some of the science and the information that are informing uh, the contribution that mangroves make to um, our uh, marine, marine coastal environment. Uh, so, Mr Chair, I didn't want to take too long a call uh, because the sooner we can get it to the Local Government and Environment Select Committee uh, to call for submissions, I know that there will be quite a, l a large number of submissions for the committee to hear. And uh, the, the other aspect, key aspect, which my uh, colleague rightly points out, uh, that is omitted in this process is circumventing uh, the Res Resource Management Act. And so that, and that again becomes quite process. a large um, area of consideration where local voice, again, uh, is not taken into account. Uh, so I think on, on those key fronts, um, I believe that I've uh, made a number of uh, uh, important uh, points. Uh, Te Kapa Moana is the Firth of Thames. The Māori word for mangrove is manawa. Manawa is a heart, but in this sense with the ecosystem, it's, it acts as a filter uh, and it expresses the role of the heart as a filter of the marine environment. Uh, so I hope that we uh, can have a, a pretty sane debate. I know that uh, when the current Mayor of the Thames Coromandel District Council uh, had championed this particular issue, she was all fired up, on fire and you know, red hot uh, in all sorts of ways ab about this issue and focused a lot of her efforts and contributions to uh, progressing this debate. She's had a chance now that she is the Mayor of Thames Coromandel uh, and uh, have, has taken the opportunity to promote a bill of this sort. Um, I do hope uh, that, uh, that in calling for submissions uh, that people, uh, uh, that the select committee uh, ensures that people get a, a good hearing um, and, that we, and that the public get a good chance to air uh, their uh, concerns around achieving the right balance uh, in terms of uh, mangrove removal, public participation in the decision-making process and also getting the balance between the recreational and the amenity, um, sorry, the recreational and the ecological uh, amenity values uh, right. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora. Andrew Bailey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to be talking on the Thames Coromandel